Yeah. Uh, what's going on everybody? Today we're talking about three of the cameras I use most often for YouTube videos. One, this Canon 80D. It's a great camera, but with these two out, I wouldn't necessarily recommend people to go buy that now, unless you are looking for a mirrored SLR camera. So the only reason why I'm shooting on it now is because I have one already, so it works. And then here's a Canon M50, which has a very similar sensor to the 80D, but it's smaller and cheaper. So for a lot of people, this is what I would recommend. And then here's a Canon EOS R, which is nice and full frame. It's mirrorless, so it's fairly compact for what it it's capable of doing. And I really do love this camera a whole lot, but the question comes down to how much better is this than this? And is it worth the price difference from $500 to like 23-ish? Now the EOS R always had a clear advantage over the M50 because of that bigger sensor amongst other things. But my question is now with this speed booster that came out from Viltrox, if you put this speed booster on this M50, is it gonna be pretty similar to this EOS R and plus it would save you a whole bunch of money. Now, if you're not familiar with a speed booster, think of it as a magnifying glass that kind of tricks your lens into thinking the sensor is bigger. That's gonna affect your image in two ways. One, it's gonna be a wider image and since the light kind of gets magnified, it's also gonna give you about an extra stop of light. So when you slap on that speed booster and you wanna match that frame, you're either gonna need to zoom in that lens or move the camera in, both of which are gonna give you a shallower depth of field. It's gonna look a lot closer to a full frame camera, although the EOS R still does have shallower depth of field just by a little bit. So one of the advantages of the EOS R is that it is weather sealed. Luckily I live in Los Angeles so I never have to worry about that, but you know, if you live in a place where it rains once in a while, having a weather sealed camera, good plan. Now while we're here, let's take a quick look at the 120 frames per second in 720p, which both of these cameras can do. Neither of them look fantastic, but definitely usable and fun. Magnifying in, both cameras can see all the drops from the splash, so that's pretty cool. I'd have to say the EOS R has a very slight advantage in sharpness here. Anyways, that was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever had to do for YouTube, so you guys totally owe me a like for that, and also you have to sit through my sponsorship read. And as usual on this channel, if there's a sponsor, then there's a giveaway. So if you want a Canon M50 with Viltrox Speed Booster, stick around. Hey, Both these cameras are set to 4K right now. Can you take a little guess at which one is which. Now in 4K, keep in mind that both these cameras do crop into the sensor, so you're gonna need to slap on some wider lenses for those. But the EOS R does have superior 4K because it maintains that dual pixel autofocus while the M50 loses it. But in terms of image quality, you guys decide while I'll tell you guys about Skillshare, our sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands and thousands of courses on basically everything you might wanna learn about, anything from art, design, to business. Business is actually a pretty interesting one, especially for you filmmakers out there. Aside from all the fun parts of picking up a camera and filming and having fun with it all, there's still the business side of it. So we're talking about taxes and legal documents and how to do all that. Premium Accounts gives you access to everything. So literally you could just binge watch a whole bunch of courses and just be a genius. So yeah, if you wanna be just that grandmaster at life, then go hit that link in the description. First 500 people to click that link. Get the first two months for free, that's right. You're welcome. And there's no obligations during that free trial, but if you wanna continue using it afterwards, an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. So unlimited skills, 10 bucks a month, that's pretty reasonable. Especially if you're watching these videos, then you probably spend hundreds of dollars on a lens that you've never used. See, you could just put that towards Skillshare classes, much more useful, right? <laughs> just kidding, we all want that useless lens. Anyways, have you guys figured out which camera is which? And if you have not, this is the EOS R and this is the Canon M50. Now looking at the footage side by side, it's surprisingly comparable. Although the EOS R definitely has a bit more clarity, but I'm gonna mention it again because it's important. The EOS R has great autofocus in 4K and some really powerful codec. In case you wanted to do some heavy color grading, it's an option on the EOS R. And of course, C-Log, which is Canon's log format that was specifically designed to work with 8-bit codec. And that's really great because you have an opportunity to really use utilize all that dynamic range even with the built-in codec. Also on both these cameras in 4K, you have the option to shoot 24 frames per second, but on the EOS R, you also have 30. So pairing that with a powerful codec, awesome autofocus, and C-Log, it really is ready for professional use. Yeah, the 4K crop kind of sucks, but pair with the right lenses and it's gonna look great. Now, most of the time I'm just shooting in HD, so I'm utilizing the EOS R's full frame. And then with the M50, I'm using the speed booster to kind of emulate that full frame feel. 
feel. It's still a little bit tighter of a shot than the full frame camera, but it gets much closer. These are both 50 millimeter lenses right now. And the M50 is still a little bit tighter, but they're pretty comparable at this point. And of course, when introducing a speed booster onto a Canon M50, there's gonna be some concerns. Does everything translate okay? For example, how's the autofocus? And the answer is surprisingly good. With the Canon M50 and speed booster, we didn't notice a significant drop in speed for the dual pixel autofocus. I was also a bit concerned about noticeable vignetting or softness on the edges, but from normal usage, I didn't notice anything significant. Now the speed booster should give you an extra stop of light, so technically you should be able to drop your ISO in about half. However, the EOS R still looks cleaner even when its ISO is double the Canon M50. All right, so now let's get to the test that I consider to be the most important test of this video, which is which camera has the best HD. I definitely love 4K sometimes, but I feel like it can be a little bit overrated because there's a lot of people out there that think that to get a sharp image, you need to have 4K, which is definitely not true. If you guys saw my video last week about which cameras were used to film the Oscar nominated films, you'll realize a majority of them were filmed on either the Arri Alexa Mini, XT or SXT, and none of those cameras are 4K. The sensors on those cameras just don't have that many pixels, so oftentimes they're shot at 2.8K or 3.2K, and their reason is because they don't want the most pixels, they want the best, cleanest pixels. And obviously, they know what they're doing because they win a majority of the Oscars every year. So the takeaway here is that not all HD is created equal. Even though in the menu, they may look like the same exact things, they could be completely different. So let's bring in the EOS R and the Canon N50, and let's take a look at the HD on both these cameras. Now we're gonna try to control this test as much as possible, so we're gonna be using the same exact lens on all three cameras in the same position, same lighting, all on the same standard picture profile. If you basically pull all three of these cameras out of the box and hit that record button, this is what it would look like on those three cameras. All of these are shooting 1080p at 24 frames per second IPB codec. Now let's crop in real quick and you'll notice pretty quickly that the ADD is definitely the softest, which is why I'm probably gonna retire this ADD pretty soon, switch it out with something else. Now let's hand it off to the M50 real quick. <laughs> All right, thanks man, you're looking good today by the way. Are oh, you just gonna ignore me? Now this is the Canon M50 and you may notice that already it's looking a bit sharper, which I was pretty surprised about. The downside of it is that it does look a little bit digital. Now there's a pretty big difference between getting an actual sharp image, like an actual clear image through the lens onto the sensor and saved into the video, opposed to a digital sharpening. Digitally sharpening stuff can often look pretty nice because you are just kind of creating a little bit more contrast around edges on everything, but sometimes you can overdo it and then things just start to look a little bit crazy. So this does look sharper than the ADD, but a lot of it does look digital to me. So I would personally turn it down a little bit. You can always add a little bit back in post. All right, so let's kick it off to the EOS R. All right, thanks the kid from up. What did you just call me? Why don't you come to my did face, you, you little joke? bitch? You're lucky that there's ADD asshole. right Shut here completely. Shut up. All right, so welcome to the EOS R. And we have the same exact lens on here, but the reason why it looks the same and not wider is because it's an EFS lens, meaning that it's designed for crop sensored camera. So when I put this EFS lens on the EOS R, automatically detects it and automatically crops in. So it looks just like the other cameras. That's actually kind of a cool feature because then you can slap on full frame lenses or EFS or crop lenses like the Sigma Art lenses. And again, we are still in IPB codec. Technically speaking, if you look at the settings, it should all look pretty much the same, but notice that the EOS R just looks so much sharper. And that's something I noticed from when I first got this camera is that everything just looks naturally sharp. And to me, all the sharpness looks organic. It doesn't look like super digitally sharpened. So I've been pretty happy with the way this EOS R looks. This might need to become my new camera that I leave on my desk. I am pretty curious how different this is gonna look to you guys after I render it out and upload it through YouTube's compression. But I can tell you right now that when I look at this footage side by side on my high res display, it's very, very different. And again, this is in HD, but you also have the option to kick it up to 4K and here's how different the two look in HD to 4K. So yeah, it does look a little bit sharper over here in the 4K world, but it's a little bit tough to tell unless you're on like a high resolution display. If we punch in, we can see a little bit of a difference, but overall both HD and 4K 
look very comparable when you're just looking at it on a smaller display. It's kind of hard to tell the difference, honestly. 4K can be a tad bit sharper, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. I'm very happy with how good the HD out of that EOS R is. So to sum it up, the EOS R is a noticeably better camera on most fronts. The biggest factor to me is the fact that it looks so much better in HD and doesn't have that digital sharpening. And it's also just built more for professional use. Like the EOS R has like a headphone jack so you can monitor audio. Also does this cool thing how the sensor covers itself when you're doing a lens swap. Also the M50, if you plug in an HDMI monitor, it shuts off the rear monitor back here. You can only use one or the other. This one, you can continue to use this screen while you're feeding to an HDMI monitor. You could also record 10 bit if you're recording externally. You got more dials, you got more menu options. It's more robust. It's just overall a professional grade camera. But with that being said, I still think the Canon N50 did so well and so close to the EOS R in so many cases, especially once you start slapping on some serious lenses and that speed booster, this became really surprisingly good. So yeah, I would say if you're a professional or you're planning on taking into some serious weather, you just want the best possible image, more options, you want more dynamic range, you plan on doing low light, then I would say probably go for this EOS R. It's a solid camera. But if you're just kind of getting into shooting video, then this M50 is surprisingly good. And after playing with this Viltrox Speed Booster, I'll link this below, I'm impressed with this thing. I think it really narrows the gap a little bit between these two cameras, making this a little bit more of a serious option. And the Viltrox Speed Booster is not crazy expensive. So if you already have an M50, you're planning on getting an M50, I definitely recommend getting it. In addition to getting the Speed Booster, you're now gonna be using EF lenses and you have a huge, huge selection. Also, don't forget that once you put the Speed Booster on here, you're gonna have to treat this camera more like a full frame camera so that means full frame lenses. And I know a ton of you guys have the Sigma 18 to 35 art lens, but don't forget that this is not a full frame lens. So you can kind of see that the sides here get cut off. But once you zoom in past about like 28 millimeter, then you get that full field of views. I have also noticed that on this lens, it does seem to glitch a little bit, right? When I zoom into a certain spot, see how it gets brighter? I don't know exactly why it does that. And that's really the only glitchy thing I saw, but that's probably because this art lens isn't designed to work with this because it's crop lens. But I have yet to come across any issues with these full frame lenses. So I think we're probably good. All right, so now let's talk giveaway. The randomized winner for the Panasonic G7 was Ryan. So congrats to Ryan. Hope you use it to film some epic stuff. And now we're giving away a Canon M50 with this Viltrox Speed Booster. All you gotta do to enter the win is, uh, I haven't even thought this part through. Uh, how about you do like 10 jumping jacks and leave a comment or something? Best of luck. So let's close this off by reading a few comments from my last video, which was all about lighting setups you could do with only one light. Delightful video, as always. Get it? Get it, guys? Light? Light? Because the video was about lights? <laughs> Lighting is so important. Good enlightenment. <laughs> you guys and your puns. Are you gonna go to NAB this year? If so, I hope to see you there. Probably not, unless they have an open bar. Wow, this video is lit. <laughs> 410, Illuminati confirmed? Let's see what he's talking about. There's kind of a little triangle underneath the eye. <laughs> I guess so, yeah, you got us. I just want one of those heart likes from Potato Jet. Done, I make dreams come true. I still miss the Looney Tunes intro. Well, just for you. Yo, huge thanks for the G7. Really can't wait to start shooting on it. If you guys want to check out my channel, it's just Ryan Sondak. All right, peace out.